welcome everyone to this wonderful presentation on the classification of stakeholders yes we would like to dissect the stakeholders into various categories in this particular presentation in fact the very first slide tells me who are the various groups of people of interest you know they are the stakeholders one <coughs> is the owners second the implementers of the managers the employees the team team members the customer the end users the government the regulator the supplier the vendor the community the public the society at large and last but not least will be the competitors believe me or not when we are classifying it people might ask me why competitor has been classified as a stakeholder belief understand the very fact that once the project has been completed it is for the betterment of the community at large it is the betterment of the society at large and we are not going to refrain the computers from the usage of the uh, end use of the project altogether let's say we have built our flyover so the computers can also also utilize the flyover to commute for transportation of their things so we are utilizing it's a mutually beneficial things at the end of the day it's just a flyover that we are talking about it and we can have got n numbers of project even even a medical discovery the competitors can come up come in with a generic versions of the drug that we are looking into it it is small versions and every everything it helps the community at anywhere so who are the stakeholders we are talking about the owners the managers the employees the customers the government the suppliers the community and the competitors yes these are the stakeholders. remember the summary of the business owner that i want to go around it what are they they are the directors the managers the employees the individual capacity the investors and probably the other vendors and companies interested with into it so we have the entrepreneurs and we have the shareholders so this might be the originator or uh, let's say the uh, person the person who initiated the business the founder altogether and then probably when the business went on bigger we had other shareholders people bought in invested in their money so that the business grew up so this is how we are talking around it so basically business owners are the entrepreneurs and the shareholders out there and then there are the vital integral part of the stakeholder that comes around it so we need to understand this perfect and believe me why am i talking about the business owner because at the end of the day completion of the project might be a business person so what are stakeholders are the people or the organization with an interest in that particular business remember this is what we are looking into any sort of interest let's say talk, we talk about at school the parents are interested for a better education the children are interested to have a understanding of the better topic or probably to grow up as a person the teachers the faculties would be interested to earn their livelihood the administrator would like to uh, would be interested to have a wonderful reputations build a brand all together the government is interested so that the community at large should get a minimum level degree of uh, education which is affordable at the same time so we look at it just a pro uh, project called school and we have got number of stakeholders coming in so this is normal because everybody is directly affected by the business or how it operates both as of today and in times to come so stakeholders are people or groups who are affected by the action of your business often that is the reason why we have iso 2000 emphasizes the involvement of stakeholders and look at it the tandem dance that people are doing around here actually helps you this elaborate the importance of the stakeholder that comes around here so these are the people who have you have vital to the success or should i say are the integral part of the all together so building relationship is the area is the crux area is the most pertinent area of any business today remember it can be associated with the success of the organization or probably any irregularities that the organization might be involved in stakeholder framework helps identify both the internal and the external holders stakeholders the internal stakeholders who have direct relations with the business altogether let's say they must be earning a salary probably or wages 
probably or let's say they are involved in a direct transaction that comes up with the business altogether whereas the external stakeholders might not be so they have the other ambient or tangential benefit or association with the business houses so it helps to monitor response to the needs values and expectation of the stakeholders group on basis we'll talk about it about the different classification both internal remember internal is this one uh, and external is this one absolutely this one is the external part so internal stakeholders are employee managers and owners so they have direct responsibilities right you are talking about direct responsibilities as owner owners are going to earn profit managers are going to have a lot of bonuses incentives and salaries employees would be having the similar benefit all together then who are external stakeholders they are suppliers they are your vendors they are the society at which the organization operates the government and which collects the taxes probably they are the creditors who employs money deploys money in your business so that they earn certain interest there are shareholders who are investing in your business and any business has to have a customer because without the customer the business cease to exist remember external stakeholders are suppliers society government creditors stakeholders shareholders and customer these all together the both internal stakeholders and the external stakeholders together forms the company as such so stakeholders internals are basically directly affected by the consequences or impact of any decision that a company makes on its behalf remember they have their hands their claws their teeth are completely within the ambit of the organization and the success and the failure of the organization will determine their own success or own failure because accordingly it will be they it's directly proportional altogether if the company is not doing good if it falters to gain orders probably people employees would be asked to leave they might be asked to get go into the separation process but on the other hand if the company is doing good a lot of order books have been filled in so do you think there would the companies would be asking anyone to leave probably not in fact on the other other way around the company will be going for a recruitment spree altogether so internal stakeholders that we comes around it we need to understand that internal stakeholders how they are being responsible so let us understand they are the managers they are the employees they are the executives of now we'll talk about the external stakeholders external stakeholders are essentially those individuals essentially those groups or entities that are beyond the purview of the organization they are not directly uh, linked to the organization but yes the growth of the organization that fall of the organization does makes an impact albeit on a lit, on a lesser uh, degree but there is an uh, impact so external stakeholders are what they are customers they are suppliers their communities their governments and so on and so forth external stakeholders can exercise different types of power in an organization they might be making the organization responsible answerable for their actions altogether through either of the economic means either of the political means either of the illegal means that you're looking at across a grid so external stakeholders have caught their interest very well tied out within the uh, broader perspective of the operation of the business altogether so that is it so let me give you a brief glimpse about the various interaction models that comes around it now we got got an sig an sig is a special interest group looking at the customers oriented media on the other hand would be looking at the employees altogether the competitors on the other hand would be looking at the suppliers the trade associations would be looking at the communities now everything in between is relatable because customers will be looking at the government regulatory agencies and the employees all together because some of the customers might be employees also at the same time the mass media would be looking as employees and a customers and the shareholders they will be looking so this is an amalgamation that keeps on taking in terms of competitors in terms of trade associations suppliers and so on and so forth what i have tried to do, uh, underline is with every dotted line these are secondary stakeholders remember but every permanent bold lines which is known about these are primary stakeholders that relates to the company all together so this will give you exactly the understanding of the depiction of the stakeholders interaction model all together 
company employees shareholders supplier community government agencies are directly linked almost directly linked absolutely whereas sigs mass media associations of trade and competitors are indirectly linked because based on the flourishing of this company the com competitors will have to make a changes in their ball game of doing the businesses this is how we are going around it so all dotted lines would be your secondary stakeholders wherein the direct lines would be the bolded lines would be the so orientation of the stakeholders into degree which a firm understand the business the degree which where the firm understand is this customers the degree which will the firm understand the regulations and so on and so forth now these are needs to be understood in terms of three activities number first is the generation of data next next would be once you have generated the data can you distribute make a sense of the data and distribute the information around it throughout the firm and probably how do you react with the responsiveness so your competitors might be increasing the price should you follow suit they are decreasing the price should you follow suit they are removing or probably changing the number in the quantities the qualities or the volume or variations of product line might be introducing a number of product line how do you react as a competitor as a competitor altogether so three activities generation of the data distribution of the information and the responsiveness of the organizations to this is what we are looking at it so we need to talk about the stakeholders orientations yes anything that comes around it anything that you want you need to question it yourself how does it impact so we'll talk about the responsibilities what is responsibility that comes around it it is an organization obligations to maximize positive impact of the stakeholders definitely yes absolutely the positive impact and probably reduce the negative or detrimental uh, thing so there are four levels what are they they are economic legal ethical and philanthropic now philanthropic is completely optional that we are looking into it so four levels of social responsibilities they are economic is value for money we are going to look around it legalities you need to respect the law of the land ethical should have good practices standard practices acceptable practices philanthropic is the distribution of wealth to the lesser section or the weaker section of the society completely optional social responsibility is concerned so talking about social responsibility perspective remember ethics is all about being the standard norms and expectation so you might employ children for your job and pay them half is it ethical remember the children are doing the same job that an adult will be doing around it there are two breaches of conduct first you are utilizing labor who are below a minimum age one plus now your um standard goes double you are doing an unethical business the twice the thing is you are also reducing the wages thereby so that is impardonable altogether so social responsibility is associated with what it is in, it is with the increase in the bottom line it is with the increase in the loyalty factor it is with the, with the increase in the commitment of the customers that comes around it so we are looking into money absolutely money we are looking into it yes apart from it we are looking for loyalty both from the internal employees and their external uh, customers that we are looking out so implementing the perspective how do we go across it first and foremost you need to understand the corporate culture what is a corporate culture is it transparent enough is it vibrant enough it is it honest enough or do we or do we disclose the financial details or the balance sheet or the profit and loss statement every quarter so need to understand the corporate culture identify the stakeholder groups that comes around it talking up talk about the stakeholders issues that we are looking into is assessing organizational commitment to social responsibilities definitely yes this is what we are looking at it the organizational commitment to social responsibility this is what we are looking at it so we need to understand are the organization there only to mint money probably to or to plow certain amount of money back into the society for the betterment or upliftment of its own people so we need to look into a feedback process and the urgency method that goes around it this is which is the perspective of the stakeholder that comes around it and talking about the st uh, stakeholders these are different perspective which you may emulate or may as the case might be some stakeholders are powerful they can influence how the business operates altogether they will for example there is a supplier who is very strong so 
the supplier let's say uh, the only industry which has a very good strong supply bargaining power of the supplier is the diamond industry because there are only few mines in the whole of the planet which supplies diamonds and there are fewer companies who actually own those mines so they can de determine the prices fluctuation in the prices of the price of the diamond or for that matter petrol so some stakeholders are extremely powerful some stakeholders have little or no power let's say if you are into a toothpaste business manufacturing of toothpaste you name it and we have it you have many multinational we have many homegrown com companies actually delivering quality products which are which are equivalent and if not equivalent superior at times also so you need to understand there are certain stakeholders which have absolutely no power at all so we'll talk first interest now first as far as the customers are concerned first customers are looking for value for money they are looking for a product range altogether they are looking for accessibility altogether they are looking for services so what is customers it is the ease of um, operations that we are looking into it on the other hand as an employee would be looking for a pay it is going to look for a healthy work life balance that we are looking into it it is looking for a job security it is looking for incentives the employees would be looking for a quality of work life that comes across with it on the other hand talking about the shareholders or the owners what are they looking at it they are looking at the prices the dividends the share prices and what happens if what is happening if the organization is situated in a community so the community will benefit it from definitely from good transportation good commute facility good uh, probably might be detrimental impact on the pollution wise the safety wise might generate a lot of jobs for the local people and uh, son of the soil concept that comes around it so we have so many interests be it customers be it employees be it the owners or the local might be now we'll come to the interest page two where it comes around it so government government is interested in what government is interested in enhancement of employment of the local citizens that we goes around it government is interested in looking that the pollution things should not be very detrimental to the environment government is interested in earning all together in the form of tax invoices so that is what we are looking into it government is in, uh, interested in promoting competition so that there is a fair playing field for the end consumers altogether we'll talk about the special interest groups uh, what comes around it now this is what we need to keep keep in uh, mind uh, what exactly we are looking out here is the pressure groups now the pressure groups are the people who might do uh, the work in terms of let's say uh, transportation there are unions there are certain interest members what they represent then there is something called suppliers which is i have just glorified an example with you people as far as the diamond industry is concerned or for that matter the petrol industry is concerned this is what we are looking into it the financial people people who are investing money are investing money to earn a profit and that is what the end result should be all about so let us talk about the conflict and the stakeholders stakeholder with different interest may be in conflict for example the local community might be against the expansion of business why because because it means there might be a flight of jobs there might be excellent transformations of uh, quality people who might be tech technologically enabled and technologically learned so what the local people would be doing so that means there would be a transferring of the jobs from the local community to a expatriate community shareholders on the other hand would be looking at a high dividend whereas manager would like to use the profit to build the investment have a lot of inventory at their disposal so they have conflicting interest altogether both the people have conflict in well so local people would not like to expand the business employees would like to have a job security stakeholders would like to earn a dividend earn a profit whereas managers would like to utilize or employ that profit into the business for a better return a better stable environment supplier wants high prices for the goods whereas the customer wants low prices for the end product so these are conflicting things that comes around with as far as suppliers and customers are concerned as far as shareholders and managers are concerned as far as local community and so how do we manage them this is what it comes around it that's the role of the stakeholder first and foremost is the organization of the innovation that comes around it we have the 
risk taking capacity of the um, entrepreneur so how does he innovate how does he go about it what he does to pacify either of these conflicting stakeholders that we are talking about it let's say in terms of shareholders and in terms of managers we are looking at it so should we plow in the money in the business or should we plow um, uh, take the profit out and distribute it as a dividend so you need to do a fine balance that is satisfies every one of the name so we are uh, said about the stakeholders who are the stakeholders the stakeholders are the customers the employees the owners and so on and so forth the local community the government the pressure groups the suppliers each one remember each one is the uh, stakeholder now we need to talk about it absolutely every everything now and then pacify them and make them understand the other's perspective and then only they will come onto your fold so this is what the types of shareholders remember which we have started with the presentation we said about the directors the managers the employees the individuals the institutional investors the other companies that we looking into it everybody everybody remember everybody is a stakeholders and they have their own interest altogether everyone is interested to protect their interest and nothing else but what happens is the interest at times becomes conflicting as i have just showed it to you shared it with you now that is where the finesse of the entrepreneur comes into play we'll talk about the other stakeholders let it be the customer the supplier the government and the community they are the one for whom will have a long run impact over uh, and it is not an overnight thing altogether so the government would like to earn a revenues in form of taxes for years decades and generations to come supplier would like to uh, strengthen their feet feet on the ground probably establish themselves as a viable business unit and would like to expand the business and supply to other firms altogether customers looking for a quality product and the affordable prices and so does community having a wonderful living so stakeholders and objective let us understand number 1 the directors are looking at making decisions and probably having a full tight control that means there is they are looking at power they are looking at a status whereas the shareholders are looking at nothing of powers and status they are only minting money nothing else they are only interested in the profitability of the business whereas the workers the employees are looking not at the profitability but at their regular steady income so that they can go with the chose of their mundane comes across it then we come to the talk about the customers i have been saying about it customers are only looking for one thing value for money ease of operation understanding the customer services after sales service everything that comes around it suppliers on the other hand needs to have a high price prompt payment as as and when the delivery has taken place so that is what the suppliers would be looking into the bank lenders needs to understand that the money that they have lent to the business should be recovered in full plus with the interest this is why why they are into the business of community the community has to benefit from the business that it creates the community can be benefited and believe me everybody gets a uh, share of the pie the government they are i've been trying to telling telling it to you gets a tax revenue has a business operation gives a good quality of living standards to the uh, to the its citizens probably enacts the laws and is sees that the laws have been implemented and executed in the right spirit competitors to compete in a fundamentally lawful fashion probably to differentiate the products have a better experiences for the community for the end customer as the case might be with this i come to an end of this presentation thank you for watching this video